In the 20th century, many American composers have continued to breathe new musical life into the ancient texts. The Pilgrim Psalm, Samachti Beomrim li Beit Adonai Nelech. I rejoiced when they said, let us go up to Jerusalem, to the house of the Lord. All right, we are happy to have with us Cantor Charles Osborne talking about his wonderful composition that we just heard, Samachti. Charles, this is such a popular piece. How, how do you cope with all this fame and fortune? Well, uh, fame. Uh, <laughs> the fortune thing, I, I get my um, uh, single digit check every year from Transcontinental and uh, grateful for it, grateful for it. And uh, occasionally, I'll uh, go on uh, YouTube and I will uh, see how many new versions of it there are posted because uh, it seems like every month somebody's posting a new version of, of Samadhi. Um, yeah, and I, one of my colleagues who just took a, a position in Florida, who was our assistant cantor for, for a number of years, uh, has been asked by her colleagues uh, so what was it like working with Samachti Boy, uh, meaning me, of course, and uh, the answer is, uh, as far as it all goes, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of nice, it's kind of nice, I, uh, it, it's, nice it's nice to be known for something, let's put it that, something positive, okay. So how did the piece come about? Uh, what or who inspired you? Was it a commission? It was... Uh, a request by a fellow by the name of Hazan Solomon Mendelssohn. Sure. Uh, Saul Mendelssohn, a.k.a. Jackie's older brother, who uh, was <clears throat> uh, not only a, a president of the Cantor's Assembly, but uh, one of its prime movers and shakers, and somebody who uh, always had these amazing creative ideas, and it was sometime early in 
1995 when I get a call from Saul, uh, which I think is a popular TV show now anyway, but I get a call from Saul and he says to me that he wants a theme song for the 1996 Cantor's Assembly Convention, which was held in Jerusalem in honor of the 2000th anniversary of the founding of the city of David. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, I uh, certainly was familiar with the text uh, and um, also familiar with a, a, a number of settings, not the least of which uh, was uh, uh, Hubert Parry's setting, I was glad, which is done at all of the great uh, the coronations of the, of the kings and queens of, of uh, the UK. Um, and, and that just seemed like a, like a, a natural, you know, Shir Hama'alot, uh, a pilgrim song, and, and uh, my first time in Jerusalem, so uh, it uh, resonated that way as well. And um, so I, I, I started writing this thing. Actually, I could demonstrate a little bit of this, if you like, on the Please. keyboard. Because yeah. I happen to have a keyboard handy. Ah, yeah, so I was actually just uh, for you out in TV land, I was demonstrating to uh, Professor Jacobson that this is my home uh, studio so I can magically appear in my main sanctuary or my uh, chapel as, a, as the, the need arises here, but I'll keep it on, on green screen for the moment here. Uh, one of the things that I do when I'm composing is I try very hard not to get locked into anything too close. I'm not, I'm not trying to necessarily write a tune per se. Um, I'm just trying to uh, get a sense of a feel of, of, of how I want it to, to, to feel. Okay, so the first thing that comes out of my brain is... next thing that comes out of my brain is whoa <laughs> which goes to an entirely different place okay but since I was looking for a theme song and not the first movement of a piano concerto I decided to close the loop harmonically so it And there's so there's your um, there's your cadence establishing key, which in this case is E, e flat major, right? So there's your five. Right, there's your 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 two, but it's actually functioning as four. And then back to the five. So now we've we've established our tonal center, which is which is E flat, and it also closes the loop of the song. Um, Okay, so now I've got something I can work with. There's your there's your question. Here's your answer. I get to this point, and I've got way too many words for the tune that I want to do. So I did something inexcusable. I actually left out half a verse of the Hebrew. <laughs> I was going to ask you about leaving out verse five. Yeah. And I said to myself, nobody's going to know this song after 1996. Nobody, you know, it just, it, you know, so I, I could have, I, I still play with it in my mind. Sometime I'm going to go back and, and add that in. song. Uh, it was premiered at uh, Kutcher's Hotel in the Catskills. Uh, uh, Mrs. Kutcher was still there and alive at the time. At the 1995 uh, Cantor's uh, Assembly Convention and as soon as I was finished it one of my colleagues comes up to me and says how, can you, how soon can you have a choral arrangement for that? Uh. So it was originally a solo piece. It was originally a solo piece. It was just going to be a song. 
as soon as I sat, I mean, literally as soon as I, I finished, somebody asked me about a coral arrangement. So I said, give me two weeks. So in two weeks later, I had a coral arrangement, which is where the, um, the uh, desk camp comes, right? <laughs> So I wanted to ask you about the, the descant, which is a characteristic feature of English hymnody. And I just, I just found this wonderful description by the composer, Athelstan Riley. He says, the effect is thrilling. It gives the curious impression of an ethereal choir joining in the worship below. And those who hear it for the first time often look up to the roof. So uh, obviously you must have been aware of this this feature of English hymnody. Uh, did you consciously do it? I uh, yeah, I mean, it, uh, the, although I have to say uh, it had effects far beyond anything I could have thought of. Oh, and oh, by the way, this thing. The introduction to the piece, I said to myself, I need an introduction. So I sat down at the piano and I played. Wrote it down. That was the introduction. It took me about 15 seconds. You make it sound easy. <laughs> that, that is the first thing that popped into my head. All right. And, and it, it, it's, uh, it's stayed ever since. Um, yeah. Uh, Lori Corson retired a few years ago as the cantor at uh, Emanuel Synagogue in New York City. And Lori shared with me a letter that she received from someone who may, I think may have been one of her congregants, about how hearing Samakhi had renewed his uh, faith and identity as, as a Jew. And I'm going, whoa, that's some heavy business, okay? I, I, interestingly enough, Temple Emanuel in New York and this song have had quite a, a, a tight experience here. Um, uh, in 1998, the Candor's Assembly Convention was in New York City. And um, I got a chance to sing Samachti at uh, Emmanuel in New York with their magnificent choir and uh, organ. And afterwards, I'm standing in the aisle and all of these attractive young women are coming up to me, which I'm sure was very flattering, but I had no idea why this was happening. And then I realized what they were saying was, oh, I want that played at my wedding. I want that played. I had that played at my wedding. I want that played at my wedding. You know, so it's like it, the thing has had a, a, an amazing run. I've just been uh, astounded by this, and, and well um, deserved. Well deserved. I've done I've done string quartet arrangements. I've done uh, SSAA arrangements, soprano and alto. I've done TTBB arrangements for barbershop quartet type groups. I've done SAB arrangements. I've done just you know, it, it just it just keeps coming. It just keeps coming, and and. Um, all right, so Charles, you have written many pieces. I mean, Samachti may be the most famous, but we've done your wonderful oratorios. What inspired you to become a composer? Well, not so. I, 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 don't, I tried my hand at composing when I was a kid. I got no encouragement. I tried again a little bit in high school. I got no encouragement. Somehow, uh, the fact that one of my cousins was a star at the Metropolitan Opera kind of sucked me into well, uh, Justino Diaz, uh, who um, it should be mentioned. Uh, if, for those of you who are not uh, aware of this, my mother's maiden name was Morales. And uh, Justino Diaz, who uh, of course um, opened the new Metropolitan Opera in Anthony and Cleopatra with Leontine Price, uh, was my second cousin, still is actually. And uh, so I got, you know, inspired to, to go into uh, to go into opera, and um, it was kind of funny because one of my uh, music education teachers in uh, university uh, uh, asked me, "Why did I go into singing? Why didn't I stick with the trombone?" <laughs> um, that was 
I would encourage you. <laughs> and, and, and I, everybody else in the class kind of looked at each other. You know, uh, but um, yeah, I um, really hit my mark. It wasn't what inspired me, it was who inspired me. And there were two of uh, my teachers at uh, Jewish Theological Seminary. Um, uh, and um, one of, one of, of which was uh, Hugo Weisskull. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hugo, uh, we would spend an hour working heavily on composition, and then I would spend the next couple of hours sitting with him in his office while he was waiting for his wife to come in uh, from, uh, from uh, Long Island to uh, uh, go to a show or an opera or a concert or something like that. But I got to know the man very, very well. and. Mm -hmm. um, he was a he was a huge ins inspiration to me. He also looked at me one day out of the corner of his eye and asked me, "Why don't you write tonal music?" Because I was just writing, you know, atonal music at that point. Because I was just, you know, oh, you know, yeah, you, you want to be a composer. Um, uh, Hugo Weisskull's uh, father, of course, was uh, Ava Weisskull, uh, Adolf Weisskull, who was uh, uh, the great cantor in, in, in Baltimore. And uh, Hugo himself had a f beautiful bass baritone, and I asked him one time, well, why don't you sing more? And his response was, if, if it gets known that I'm a singer, I won't be taken seriously as a composer. And I don't know how true that is or not. I have to tell you, um, I've still been, I, I'm still singing, and I'm still being taken seriously as a composer. So, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not sure that that necessarily would have flown every place. Maybe in this his circle of friends and acquaintances in New York at the time, that might have been it. Uh, the other influence was the great Miriam Gideon, mm -hmm. who. Um, Hugo, as the uh, chairman of the faculty of the then Cantor's Institute, now H. L. Miller Cantorial School of Jewish Theological Seminary, had the great and good sense to hire. Uh, and Miriam basically opened my, my mind to the whole idea of, of looking at a sheet of, of manuscript paper as a, as a gateway into a whole nother universe, mm -hmm. you know, and um, simple things, but such as if you don't like the way something sounds, change it. <laughs> or if you're concerned that what you're writing sounds like something else, write it anyway because ultimately everything is derivative you know i i think there's a certain wisdom to that i i, I on the other hand uh, one of the things that uh, my rabbi michael dolan and i have spoken about uh, from time to time is the uh, amazing thing that all over the world at this moment hundreds and perhaps thousands of people are writing songs and, and pieces of music, none of which are identical to any of the others. Mm -hmm. There are Each so many combinations. It, 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 yeah, uh, somebody asked one of my friends, uh, well, Joseph Ness, who is a, also a cantor and a fantastic composer, somebody asked him once if there were any similarities between his music and my music, and he thought for a moment and said, well, we use the same 12 notes. <laughs> so, but the fact that you've got this amazing ability and variety, and um, she was very, very encouraging, and um, uh, it just it, it, under her tutelage, which was, which was actually there wasn't the wasn't so much a teaching uh, as it was um, uh, her ability to allow me to trust my own musical aesthetics. Mm. That she was able to do, and um, you know, this was uh, starting in September of 1983, and I haven't uh, turned around since. And we're I'm glad. Back and I'm still writing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, 
So, um, yeah, I, uh, I thank them both profoundly uh, because uh, they're the ones who, who really opened up this whole uh, world for me. Wonderful. Uh, it also has a certain practical uh, aspect as a, as a synagogue uh, cantor because uh, a lot of people go online and say, I need a piece for this, I need a piece for that, I need a, 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 that kind of a thing. I just, oh, I'll just write one. Write it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I uh, uh, large percentage of my uh, high holidays now is my own composition, but uh, definitely keeping uh, a lot of uh, Ben Steinberg's music. Uh, ben, of course, is you know our uh, composer and residence here at uh, Temple Sinai in Toronto, and um, uh, you know an institution himself, and uh, he he put down the framework for high holiday services, which are some of the classiest compositions uh, going. Um, so, I mean, uh, how many how many synagogues do you know of that uh, still do Lazar Weiner pieces for, for Rosh Hashanah? Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, beautiful, st oh my God, just beautiful, um, beautiful stuff. Um, Charles, uh, another question. How are you dealing with the situation we have now where singing is such a super spreader? Um, for the high holidays, uh, what we did was we, our singers for my choir were not only socially distanced, but wore masks as they were singing, as did I, as did our conductor, as did our organist, as did our harpist, as did anybody who was in the room and breathing at the time. Mm. Uh, singing, definitely masked. Well, Charles, before we sign off, uh, anything else that you'd like to add? Yes, I love the Zamir Kerala of Boston. I was love, 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 love the, yes, and... <laughs> And the Zamir Karel of Boston loves you, Charles. Uh, some of some of my my very most favoriteest people on the planet, and um, my uh, my uh, fondest regards to everybody. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Good talking to you, Charles. Always a joy. You too.